Hey, it's Joseph here. Today I wanted to do a simple unboxing of this device over here. It is a device from Synology. Disk station is perhaps the how it is labeled here, but it is called DS220J. It is the most basic type of unit that Synology offers. It is just to get my feet wet with all the NAS system so that I can expand into much further if it proves to be something useful for me. So yeah, and the other brown box over here is the hard drive. And because this is two bay unit, I really should have two hard drives for it. However, testing out all the methodology and the things that you can do with Synology Drive doesn't really require two drives. So for that specific purpose, I just went with just one drive. And when I deem all of this to be suitable for my own task and the workflows that I have, then I'm just gonna expand it into another drive for either redundancy or additional storage. I'm gonna figure that part much later, but for today's purposes, we're just gonna unbox this and then basically fit this hard drive in so that you guys are aware what we are looking at and what to expect out of this box. And just to go over the packaging a bit, here it says Disk Station DS220J. Again, this is the most basic line for the beginners. This specific unit has 64-bit quad-core processor with 512 megabytes of DDR4 memory, compact, quiet, and energy-efficient unit powered by this station manager. So you're gonna have its own OS. As I open up this device, I'm going to mention a bit more about the NAS drive, NAS, Network Attached Storage. Basically all the storage devices that are directly connected to your computers are DAS, Direct Attached Storage, whereas this specific one is network storage, therefore you can access it from all over the world where you are given with internet. And inside of the box you can expect paper manual, the quick start guide kind of thing quick installation guide and here are some cables this one is power cable not really long but that will do for me today and then the next one is the Ethernet cable so that you can attach to your network and then power adapter so that you just attach to here I guess so the overall length does increase this way however you do have to connect the barrel plug to your unit and then here is a bracket of some kind. I'll figure that one out later. And then some screws, assuming that they are for attaching your hard drives. And I guess that is it in terms of what's in the box. And then here is the actual unit. Quite light, much lighter than I thought it would be. As you can see, there's nothing really fancy about this. It is quite a glossy plastic, if you will, but the aesthetics is nothing really that I'm after. But let's go ahead and look at the front. Here, I guess the front LED indicators that shows you status, LAN disk one, disk two connection, along with the power button. And on the back, here is the fan. I'm assuming this is a 92 mil fan. Hopefully it's not as loud. And here's a reset switch. And then two USB type A ports along with the ethernet cable port that we're gonna connect into later. And then here's a Kensington lock along with the power jack for the barrel plug. And then on the bottom, you've got some rubber feet so that you can grip onto the floor. So here it says close versus open. I guess you just kind of slide this to open direction oh it goes this way so you go to the close direction this is a little bit confusing anyways you push this way and then it opens up I guess this is just a cover and then here is the portion that's inside basically the motherboard and all the connection for this unit I'm not gonna get into all the bits and pieces in here but I did want to show you how I'm going about connecting the hard drive and in order to do that I do have to open up my hard drive and the hard drive of choice is an Iron Wolf drive from Seagate. Based on your usage and overall storage that you need, 
I mean the capacity, you need to get different size of unit. But I highly recommend getting a hard drive that is meant for NAS drives. They are going to denote somewhere on the drive that it is meant for NAS drives and they're just meant to run constantly. So there's definitely nothing fancy about the whole packaging. It's just brown box containing this hard drive over here. And it is a eight terabyte unit that I decide to go with. And I'm guessing this sort of slides over. Here is a slot that you need to put this into. This is not gonna be difficult, is it? And as I push that in, yeah, it just stayed in place. And I do see some screw holes over here. And then these are the screws for the drives. I just need four of them and I do need a screwdriver. Okay, so let me just flip this over to this side so you guys could perhaps see it. Putting this screw onto here. Just make sure it's all aligned. No need to tighten it really hard. And it also has rubber for anti-vibration because these drives do kind of vibrate and create movement throughout. So just to kind of go over the network attached storage NAS drives benefit is the fact that you can have this set up and just like any of your cloud storage, you can access the file from anywhere in the world as long as you have some sort of internet. And recently Google Photos actually terminated their service as free unlimited data type of service. Therefore, I'm actually needing to host my life worth of photos somewhere. And I'm thinking this may be the right solution. And obviously I'm doing a bit of a test run at the moment. So I suppose there will be a lot more contents later on where I do sort of a follow-ups and kind of introducing about different type of functions that you can utilize off of this Synology NAS drives, but yeah, this is my initial steps into it. It is my very first time. Bear with me as I'm not an expert in this matter. Hopefully you guys will be able to see the whole journey with it. So here is a single drive that's been installed and all secured into. For now, I only have one drive inside of this unit here, which is kind of unorthodox and it is not a good practice, but I'm doing a bit of a test run to see how it runs for my own purpose. And later on, I'm just gonna expand into another eight terabyte storage attached to this so that either I can have a redundant backup versus 16 terabyte of total storage. I'll see what I need the most. Obviously, I don't wanna invest a lot of money into something that I'm not gonna use in the future. But yeah, this video is just to really kind of unbox and set this thing up. And the next step would be to just connect this ethernet cable and then connect it to my router. My router is actually back there, so I'm gonna have to connect this somewhere back there or actually have a unit somewhere else and then route some longer ethernet cable to it. I'm actually planning on installing this unit in the attic, which is directly above my room and then just route one ethernet cable down the panel over there so that I can just attach to my router directly. And here is a power port that I need to connect to the back of this device. And yeah, basically connect this end to the power. And I think that's where I'm gonna wrap this up. Anyways, I'll do all the software setup part later on and perhaps showcase to you if there's anything that you wanna know about NAS storage in the world of any file management and for Google Photos, since I'm mostly interested in that because all the photos that I'm planning on storing onto this device are gonna be my personal photos, my family pictures, as well as all the professional ones. If I go out on a site visit, then I'm gonna get hundreds of photos and 360 photos and how do I host all of that to my clients so that they can view it and I can easily access all the 360 photos and how are they hosted off of this unit I don't know Synology has their own photo environment I think it is called Synology photo I'm definitely gonna have to test that against the things that I intend to do and I'll 
perhaps report back to you. If you have any questions regarding it, just leave it down in the comment. I'll be happy to look at and test out what's really necessary to get some of the things done. I'm not expecting to do a very high level of setup, but something very simple. If you have liked this content, please like and consider subscribing to my channel so that you can perhaps watch more NAS related content later on. And thank you so much for watching as always. I'll see you next time. Bye.